We got another one from Tim Minchin. If I didn't have you. And this is the uh, the full uncut version. Y'all ready? Let's get it. Let's go. Good. Uh, so, I'm married. <laughs> Son, wh why? Why does he look like that? Look at his face. Oh my god, he was like a psycho girlfriend or some shit. <laughs> what the fuck? Um, ages ago, I got quite a long time. I've been married for a while. I got married to um, to uh, my wife. <laughs> seemed, seemed appropriate. Uh, she, uh, seemed appropriate. she was my childhood, you know, they call it childhood sweetheart. I, I, um, I, um, I met her when I was 17. I met her when I was 17. And uh, actually, this, here's something that's probably quite uncommon these days and probably something you don't want to know. But I've, um, I actually lost my virginity to, to the woman I ended up marrying. Um, <laughs> So socially awkward, bro. I love that shit. To the woman I ended up marrying. Um, <laughs> um. <laughs> it's not quite as sad as it sounds. It's not quite as sad. But it's pretty fucking close. <laughs> but oh, I love her. Shit. I love her very much, you know, and I've written a lot of songs about her. Come, come, come. I thought you left because of the god bashing. So, oh, my God. It's uh, so hard to tell these days. You know, Pentecostal, small bladder. Oh, I don't know. You know? <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, oh, shit. I've written a lot of songs for Sarah, for that is her name, over the years. And um, I always try to include one in my show just as a sort of thank you, really, because I just can't imagine my life without her, basically. And, and um, so Damn. this is for you, Sarah. It's called If I Didn't Have You. Yeah, yeah, if I didn't have you. Yeah. If I didn't have you to hold me tight If I didn't have you to lie with that night If I didn't have you to share my sighs And to kiss me and dry my tears When I cry you were lying Really think that I would have somebody else Yo, I'm getting like like solo Backstreet Boys, like solo boy band vibes. Like it's not even a boy band, it's just boy. You know what I mean? I think that I would have somebody else. <laughs> Some of them would be equally nice Or maybe not as nice But say smarter than you Or, or, or dumber but better at sport Or, or, or fucking tracing I'm, I'm just saying <laughs> I probably Have somebody else yeah. Get the fuck out of here If I didn't have you Someone else would do If I were a rich man Hey, thank you, Noel well. I would be either the surgeon or a model or a rally of the royals or a Kennedy or an infomaniacal exhibitionist heiress to a large chain of hotels. If I were a rich man, maybe I would fiddle, fiddle, little, little with the rich man girls. I'm not saying that I'd not love you if I was wealthy or handsome, but realistically, there's lots of fish in the sea. And if I had a different rod, I would conceivably land some. Even though I am fiscally consistently pitiable and considerably less Brad Pitt than Brad Pitiful, am I really so poor and ugly that you think only you could possibly love me and I probably have somebody else? Someone else would do. 
I'm not undervaluing what we've got when I say that given the role chaos inevitably plays in the inherently flawed notion of fate, it's abstruse to deduce I found my soulmate at the age of 17. It's just mathematically unlikely that at a university in Perth, I happen to stumble on the one girl on earth specifically designed for me. And if I may conjecture a further objection, love has nothing to do with destined perfection. The connection is strengthened. The affection simply grows over time, like a flower or a mushroom or a guinea pig or a vine or a sponge or bigotry hey, yo. or a banana and love is made more powerful by the ongoing drama of shared experience and the synergy of a kind of symbiotic empathy or something so I trust it goes without saying that I would feel really very sad if tomorrow you were to fall off something high or catch something bad but I'm just saying I don't think you're special I, I mean, I think you're special, but you fall within a bell curve. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying, probably. I think you are unique and beautiful. You make me happy to spot being around. But objectively, you would have to agree that maybe when I found you, options were relatively thin on the ground. Oh my god! You're lovely, but there must be girls as lovely as you and maybe more open to spanking or <laughs> table tennis. I'm just, I'm just saying, probably. I mean, I reckon it's pretty likely that if, for example, my first girlfriend Jackie hadn't dumped me after I kissed Winston's ex-girlfriend Nia at Steph's party back in 1993, enough variables would probably have been altered by the absence of that event to have meant the advent of a tangential narrative in which we don't meet, which is to say there exists a theoretical, hypothetical, parallel life where what is is not as it is, and I'm not your husband and you are not my wife, and I am a stunt man living in LA, married to a small blonde Portuguese skier, who when she's not training, does abstract painting, practices yoga and brews her own beer, and really likes making home movies, and suffers neck down alopecia. Oh my God. But with all my heart and all my mind, I I have just one life and just one love And my love, that love is you And if it wasn't for you, darling, you Then I would have somebody else That choreography, though, bro Someone else in Charlie Do I need to do the motherfucker, yeah Let's go, son Yeah, that was hilarious, bro So I um uh, yeah I wrote that song because I thought after all the um after all the nasty um no, so I should write something that wouldn't offend anyone you know uh, but there's always one you know <laughs> uh, I came out I came out of my show uh, a couple of months ago and I first started performing that song and there was a girl a, a young woman uh, waiting to talk to me 19 or 20 I reckon and, and at some point I said so do you enjoy the show and she said um, yeah it's really good mostly <laughs> um, <laughs> mostly. <laughs> Okay, uh, what didn't you like? And she said, um, it's just, oh, I, I liked it all. It's just um, that, if I didn't have you, the sexist one. You know, I, just, I just don't like sexist, that sort of sexist comedy. I just don't find it funny. I was just sitting there the whole time thinking, what it would be like, you know, being your wife, being the subject of such a sexist song. And I, I, I said, oh. You studying feminism at uni. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. I didn't say that. I should have said that. But I realised immediately that she'd made a mistake because she obviously thought that that was a song about love or, or, or relationships or something. It's quite clearly a song about maths. And, <laughs> and also, I thought, well, what a hypocrite. You know, because actually, if you think about it, she was being sexist in, in making the rather condescending assumption that my wife as a woman couldn't handle that, you know, sort of humour, that my wife is some kind of wilting flower of a woman who cowers in the corner of my kitchen as Yo, I he, periodically he, he's got a boy. bags of comedy oranges. All right, all right, now you're doing it too. <laughs> now you're taking but it too far. That's not the case. I mean, it's just Sarah and I share a sense of humor. Obviously, we've been together almost half our lives. She made me like this. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, 
<laughs> she made him look at that! However, if anyone still thinks I'm sexist, I'll give, I'll give you an example of Sarah's sense of humour just to, to clear it up. Um, a little bit of backstory for this one. A, a couple of years ago, Sarah and I went and, and did a, um, a, a, a baby. And um, <laughs> it was good. <laughs> you should definitely do one if you want. But I want to tell you something because I, I didn't know this, right? When you said we went and did a baby, it, it was good. It, you should do one if you want. <laughs> I love how awkward he is, bro. Um, it was good. No, you should definitely do one if you want, but I want to tell you something because I, I didn't know this, right? When, when you first get your first baby, the, when, they're, when they're little things, first couple of months, you spend your whole life scared shitless because tiny <laughs> babies, they sleep all the time, and when they sleep, they sleep like this. They go... <laughs> he thinks his baby died, bro. He's checking on him. Oh my god! He said, he said, fuck you, baby! <laughs> you scared the shit out of me! <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god, bro! Holy shit! Oh, look, my eyes are fucking watery from laughing. Oh my god. Sometimes it'd be like that. Big facts. Big facts. Yo, you're right. I like how he said, when you get your first baby. When you first get your first baby. Or, or whatever he said. When you first get your first... Yeah, yeah. That's what it was. Son. Oh, my God. Yo, I'm weak, bro. I'm fucking weak right now. Look, son. My eyes are all wet and shit. All right. <laughs> Let's keep going, bro. Let's keep going. And that's how little little babies are. So anyway, when, when my baby was about uh, that age, sort of two months old, my wife and I was evening, it was you know night time, and, and we put her to bed in her in her little in her little cot, in her little room, in our little house, in our little lives, and, and we were sitting <laughs> there on our medium sized sofa watching quite a, quite a big telly, and um, just trying to watch a movie. You know, it's evening, and just trying to relax and chill out together, and. About a quarter of the way through the movie, I said to Sarah, I'm just going to pop in and check on the baby. And Sarah said, Tim, don't go and check on the baby. Just, just sit down and relax for once. I mean, if she's asleep, you'll just, you'll just wake her up. And if she's dead, <laughs> there's not much we can do about it. <laughs> we might as well watch the end of the movie. Get an hour and a half more happiness before our life collapses. <laughs> so don't oh worry my about God. my sick fucking wife. <laughs> yeah, he, he let Although, everybody know how she is. Although, have you noticed, everyone has a line, don't they, with dark, dark humour. Everyone has their line, you know. I've never met anyone who doesn't say, yeah, I've got a really black sense of humour, you know, I really like dark comedy, but everyone has a line. You know, that's really funny, that's really funny. Oh, I'm outraged! I'm going to write a shit letter to a bad newspaper, you know. Like, <laughs> I, I find that line difficult to, to navigate. You know, I always have, even in my private life. And still, I, um, just a few months ago, I was, uh, I was in my kitchen, and um, my, my uh, baby, who at that stage was not quite two, was just wandering around the kitchen. I was making a sandwich. I noticed she'd uh, found something and stuck it in her, in her mouth. You know, they'd put in the mouth. I, was, I said, Donny, come, come here, come here, come here. What have you got? What have you got in your mouth there? Spit it out. Spit it out. Spit it out. Good girl. 
Darling, you don't put coins in your mouth. Coins are dirty, aren't they? Coins are yucky. Yeah, you don't put coins in your mouth. Your mouth is for food. And a little later on, cock. <laughs> oh, my. See? <laughs> what the f fuck, bro? What the fuck? Oh, my God. Hey, the homie Justin is in the house. What is good, brother? Welcome, man. Welcome. Muhammad, welcome, welcome. Yo, your eyes is speaking of dirty. Yo, that shit was perfect timing. I fucking knew that was funny, right? That's funny, isn't it? <laughs> exactly, but my wife was in the kitchen. Oh, shit. And my wife was like, Tim, <laughs> for Christ's sake, you can't say that. She might like pussy. <laughs> Oh my god. Son, that was some of the best shit I've ever seen, bro. Hilarious. Hilarious, bro.